Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to Rising Christian Bible Study. This is a Bible study where we meet every Thursday evening, endeavoring to feed on the true bread of life, Jesus Christ. Thank you for everyone attending and for everyone that watches uh, the uh, Bible study by way of video. I pray it's a blessing to you. All right, so let's dive right into it. Tonight's topic, let's discuss a very grand and huge, magnificent topic, the deity of Christ, the deity of Christ. I often hear, uh, I've heard a, a prominent Various debates. One particular debate was uh, with a prominent Muslim speaker, um, and where he uh, was debating with a, a young lady. Well, he he was speaking, and she was an attendee, and they allowed people they allowed people to speak, you know, on the microphone. And his claim was that there is no unambiguous passage of scripture anywhere where Jesus claimed to be God. Uh, I've actually heard that a lot over the years. People say, well, Jesus never said he was God. Well, that's not true. But I think there is a, a particular point, a level of understanding to it. Okay. Um, and when you study the scriptures, you study the Bible, it actually does make sense. You know, uh, so I wanted to go over that, you know, they claim, well, you, there's no way in the Bible where Jesus says, I am God. You know. Well, let's study that. Let's let's get into it. So let's look at Genesis 1.26. Then God said, let us make man in our image. Stop. Pause. I want to point this out. In the Old Testament, God said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. There's a, a plurality there. Let us. Okay. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. In my opinion, this is a direct pointing to of the Trinity. Let us. Yeah. Who is God talking to? Let us. Okay. I, even the Old Testament shows you that there there is a singularness, but also a plurality to God. The so I've heard many people say the word Trinity is nowhere in the Bible. Well, yes, the actual word Trinity may not be written in the Bible anywhere, but the concept of the idea is in the Bible. Okay, the triune God. It's a mystery, okay? So we understand, we do understand some of it, but in its entirety, no, I don't think man truly, we don't fully get it, but God has given us an expression of the Trinity to the extent that we can comprehend it. I've said this before, you have to remember that you're attempting to describe God this is an infinitely powerful being who holds the entire universe, all space and all time, all at once, okay? If you remember in the Old Testament, God clearly told uh, Moses, no man can see God and live. Our minds can't comprehend God, but he gives us 
enough of himself that we can, in a sense, we can assimilate. Okay, so God is triune, but he's also singular. This bothers people, some people, you know, some people struggle because they want God to make sense according to man's uh, estimations. Okay, but I believe both the Old and the New Testament do point to a triune God. The church fathers, men and writings that God ordained to help establish Christianity. That's what people need to understand. Christianity was established many millennia ago. Okay, by men that God chose and writings that God chose to help establish what exactly is Christianity. Okay, and they established this concept, this idea of they would say the same essence God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are the same essence. Okay, that's as much as they could comprehend it. All right, so I like to say it this way. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are the same species, right? They're the same species, right? They have no beginning and no end, right? There is no uh, completely unified, but yet three persons. Once again, it is a mystery, but I believe the Bible does clearly indicate this. Some people reject it because they, they you know, they don't want to accept anything that they can't make make sense to them. It has to make full sense to them, or they reject it. You know, um, the New World Translation, which is the translation of most of your witness use. I believe in their translation. It says, um, it says, it says gods. It uses plural. You know, uh, I can't exactly remember how to say, but they in there. It, it doesn't say, it, it uses the word God in a plural form, like three gods, right? Um, like I'd have to go back and read it again. But it's just meant different people's attempt to make God make sense to them, right? Let's continue. Now, I looked this up. There's a, a, a translation of the Bible. This is fascinating called the Name of God Translation of the Bible. It's not very well known uh, I don't know if very many people use it, but it's very fascinating. What they actually go through and they put the literal Hebrew names in uh, everywhere it was previously written. And this is how Second Chronicles 26 is written in um, the name of God translation. So this is referring to uh, uh, the new king of Judah. And it says, he did what Yahweh considered right as his father Amaziah had done. He dedicated his life to serving Elohim in the days of Zechariah, who taught him to fear Elohim. As long as he dedicated his life serving Yahweh, Elohim made him, gave him success. So you see a distinction here, right? Yahweh, or what we'd call the Lord, right? So as long as he sought the Lord, Elohim gave him success. So Elohim is actually plural, which means uh, which means that refers to more than a Hebrew plural, excuse me, which means that refers to more than one personal entity. And most cases in the Bible, Elohim is used to refer to the God of Israel, the one true God. So Elohim there is a plurality in it, right? But it's still one God. So even in the Old Testament, you see this. There's a, a, a bit of a distinction. It's not uh, exhaustively explained, but Elohim is like the general term for God in the, in the Hebrew language, right? It's the gen So God over time, has given man more and more accurate names, or uh, not accurate is not a good word. He has expressed names of himself to man over time, right? So Elohim was the Old Testament general God, 
right? But then Yahweh or Jehovah, as it's transliterated, is the Lord. So you see this. As, as long as he dedicated his life to serving Yahweh, the Lord, Elohim, the general God, gave him success. All right? In my opinion, this Yahweh, the Lord, is the Old Testament referral to Jesus Christ. Okay? But let's keep looking at that. All right. Deuteronomy. So we see the, here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. So we initially see there is a plurality of God, but then in this passage of scripture, it clearly points, but he's one. So it's like the Bible, God wants you to hold that concept and balance with each other. God is one, but there's three, there's a plurality. There's three, three, um, three in one. Right? So the Bible presents that to us. That it's important that you understand that there's it's one God. So don't it's not three gods. One could argue, well, why not? Well, I believe that the Holy Spirit, if it, like, for, for example, there's some, you could say three gods, right? And then there's some people that are called oneness, um, right? Well, they'll say, well, it's one God and he like just manifests in three different ways, right? Well, that was declared heresy. Right by the early church leaders, that was declared heresy. But I believe this expression, there's a balance to it that I believe God wants us to keep in mind. Right. So don't look at don't look at God as one being who just like morphs or transforms into Jesus and then to the Holy Spirit at certain times. That's the oneness idea, right? But at the same token, don't look at him as three, three distinct gods, right? Because we know if, if if the Holy Spirit had allowed that centuries ago, we all know what that would have morphed into by now, right? It would have been all type. So God knows what he's doing. It would have been all type of theologies. Uh, three gods, how they balance each other, probably battles between the gods. And then it would have been all type of comic book mythology, you know, developed for. No, it's like the Holy Spirit is saying, this is the best way. You can't fully, like the Holy Spirit saying, you can't fully comprehend me, but here's the best way to think of me, okay? I'm one God and three persons. All God, all equal, all eternally existent, no beginning, no end, all right? But in three persons. Now, let's look at this here. Here's a, so this passage of scripture, Old Testament, and then it's quoted in the New Testament. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Right? Matthew quotes this scripture. And this is what he says. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. God with us. God with mankind. Right? The infinite God born through a virgin. And what who will he be? Emmanuel. God with us. So in Isaiah and Old Testament, it prophesied that this would happen. It occurred. Matthew quoted it, right? So that once again, one God and three persons, right? One God and three persons. And one of those persons became a human being through the body of virgin, Emmanuel. So he's God. He is God with us, right? He's not a offshoot of God. He's not a um, facsimile of God. 
He is God. The, the oath is clear. God with us. Right? It's clear. Well, let's get more into who specifically are they well, who are they referring to, right? Let's look at John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. One of the most strongest, and there are many, in my opinion, strongest Trinitarian scriptures. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. He was with God. And the word was God. You see that? Both. Very clear distinction here. Right? With and was. Okay? He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without them, nothing was made, was made that was made. One of the strongest references, in my opinion, and there are others, because some people, for various reasons, uh, historical that they consider sorry they they don't want to fully embrace this but this is very direct reference to the Trinity Yahshua HaMashiach Jesus is God right so God the Father was three and one no beginning no end they were a family completely unified did not need anything, lacked nothing, but this family was so overflowing with love, they created angels and humans and animals and life just to pour out more of their love. What does the Bible tell us? God is love. He didn't have to make us, he chose to, just to love us. The word was with God and the word was God. Now, John 1, 14. And the word became flesh, very clear reference, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Very clear very direct. I personally believe the people who don't embrace the Trinity are just choosing not to. Uh, perhaps they're being motivated by the spirit of the Antichrist. Uh, I don't know. I just, I just really feel like this is a very clear concept of Christianity. And it's one of the foundational concepts of Christianity. The word became flesh and dwelt among. So the word became, so it wasn't flesh initially, right? It was God. It became flesh. It became a human being and lived amongst us, dwelt amongst us. All right? Before he even came to the earth, God sent a herald ahead of him to let people know that he was on his way. The almighty God uh, did the inconceivable, became a human being through the body of a virgin and walks amongst men. Isn't that interesting? Think about it. The all-powerful, almighty God that created all heaven, all earth, all 200 or so billion galaxies compressed himself, limited himself, you know, constrained himself down into the body of a human being. 
and then walked amongst us. Okay? The deity of Christ. We are looking at the deity of Christ. Yahshua HaMashiach. So now, I've heard people say, let me go back. I've heard people say this. Jesus never said he was God. Well, he, they, they're they saying they don't read anywhere in the Bible where Jesus says, I am God, right? Well, what, what the Holy Spirit has helped me to see, not to say I fully get it, but there's a passion in the Bible. Even Jesus quoted saying that if, you te that if a man testifies of himself, his testimony is not true. In other words, God just is. He just, this is bad English, he just be, right? You behold him and you decide. It doesn't change who he is. He will always be God. He will always be Lord. He will always be the supreme authority of the universe, right? So what, what did Jesus do? He came, to, he, he came to the earth, he performed miracles, and he said, you should believe me for the very work's sake. In other words, God the Father is testifying to you that he sent me. He's testifying to you of who I am. But look at the works he's allowing me to do. Works that some have never been done by anyone ever. Like the, uh, the blind man who received sight said, um, it's never been heard that anyone born blind has ever received their sight. So I interpret this to mean, yeah, there might have been cases where perhaps someone became blind through an accident or whatever. maybe there was surgery, maybe there was medicines, and they re, uh, regained their sight. But he said, never has been heard that um, someone born blind, blind should receive their sight. So God the Father was testifying to the world that this is my son. Look, he was showing you. So what does God do? I am that I am. God, once again, might be bad English. God just be, right? He's just himself. So God is not, um, he doesn't go around like, this, this is who I, you know who I am? This is who I am. But, you know, you know he, he, he just is being himself, which is God, right? And then he lets you decide. He lets you choose the, the correct perspective. All right? So now, a time will come when those who choose a particular perspective will be contained in a particular place. And those who choose a, another perspective will allow, be allowed to rule and reign with Jesus Christ throughout the cosmos. All right? But it's your choice. You choose, right? So Jesus said that if a man testifies of himself, his testimony is not true. But but he also said that if two people testify of someone, then that testimony is true. And he said, there's two that testify. I'm testifying of me, true. And God the Father. What better witness could any person have than God the Father? Can you get any better witness any better backing than that than the almighty god showing you evidence that this is my son right but he said, well they like to say that uh well he never said it well yes he did right but perhaps not in the way you're seeing it so let's look at this but jesus answered them my father has been working until now and i have been working now watch this. So Jesus is having his dialogue with them. This, it's you know, he's going. He went back and forth with them. And at the end of the statement, watch. They said, therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. This is the Bible. See. He was saying, I am God, right? Perhaps not directly saying it using those exact words, but he was saying, God is my father, and he was behaving and doing works that are consistent with God, things that only God could do, right? So that those who would behold it would believe. Remember in the Old Testament, for those of you, excuse me, in the New Testament, 
of those who study when Lazarus died and Jesus returned, right? Uh, and before he returned, he said, it's a good thing that I was not here, that he wasn't there to heal Lazarus. What? But Jesus, Lazarus died. And Jesus said, that's a good thing, right? So that you can believe. So you can see what's going to happen and you will believe. It was good that I wasn't there to, to, to heal him. God is going to show you an amazing sight to help you to believe. And he raised Lazarus from the dead. And the Bible says many people believed on him. All right? So when Jesus is saying God is his father, he was saying he is God. And, and understand this, the Jews at that time understood what he was saying protractors or debate they want to say well he didn't directly say i am god he said god was his father he said i'm the son of god but understand the jews who were present at that time they understood what jesus was saying which is why they picked up stones to stone him they knew what he was saying they understood it perhaps we don't in our modern day language and different, you know, expression and text, but they understood. Oh, they understood. So now, then the Jews took up stones. This is John 10. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works I have shown you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy and because you being a man make yourself God. Okay. The Jews, then they got it. Now they were wrong in terms of it being blasphemy. Just think about it. Why was it such a big deal? Then You know why? So what's the big deal? Just ignore him. Well, this man was doing mighty works. He was doing great miracles that testify only someone from God could do something like this. Only God could do these type of miracles. Even the blind man said, this man was a sinner. How could he do these mighty works? All right. So that's why it was they couldn't ignore him. If he was just making claims, right? They could ignore him. Okay, whatever. But he was walking in the power of God. He was walking in the power of God. And so they couldn't ignore him because he was doing mighty works. And from his words, they understood. Oh, you are, you're saying you're God. You see that? You're saying you're God. They understood his meaning. They understood it to such an extent that they were ready, willing to pick up stones and stone him to death. What are we studying? Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, is God. He is God. God is infinite, right? So I think the problem that sometimes people have is they... They have trouble, or like a, uh, a Jew, uh, not a Jew, a uh, Jehovah Witness, once she was talking to me, she said, well, I have a daughter. And I was like, yes. She says, well, she's my daughter. I said, yes, yeah, true. She said, but she's not the same as me. And I said, yeah, see, that's where you're missing it. You're missing it. Your daughter, she's not a dog or a cat or a bird, is she, or a tree? No. She's a human being just like you. She's the same species as, as you, right? Human beings, right, are very uh, limited, one place, one time, right? That's just how we're made. But God is infinite. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all have the attributes of God equally. They're infinite, all-powerful, all-knowing, okay? live outside of space and time, 
can interact with space and time. And in the case of Christ, one of those persons actually entered into space and time. He limited himself. He compressed himself and entered into space and time to interact with it at a more intimate level. Right? So, yeah, you, uh, referring to this Jehovah Witness I spoke to, are singular, right? You're not infinite. Right? But your daughter is the same species as you and has the same human attributes as you have. She has the same uh, uh, characteristics that you have because she's human like you're human. Well, God is God. His species is, you know, the spirit. I don't know exactly how you title it, but God is, and he has particular attributes that are characteristics of his species. But there's only three that are of the same essence. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit only. No other being entity anywhere ever has no beginning and no end, lives outside of space and time. You know, nothing, anyone, anything, anywhere. Only those three. Now, we have the beauty that when you put your faith and trust in Jesus, when you put your faith and trust in Christ and the gospel, the Holy Spirit grafts you now into that family. You get the honor of becoming grafted into the family of God. You get that honor, that blessed state of being grafted into the family of God, right? You are not the only begotten of God, no. I've heard people say that. I don't personally think that's a correct interpretation of that. Um, at least not at this point, right? So now I am now a son of God. I'm grafted into the family of God, right? I'm not, I am, he's made me a son of God because I put my faith and trust in Jesus and I believe in the gospel. I believe that Christ suffered for me. He paid the price, he paid the penalty for every, any and everything that was keeping me separate from God. And now that I put my faith and trust in, I've been restored to the Father. I've actually been restored to the state that Adam had prior to the fall. Now, the full realization of it is a growing process. There's a process of faith, of growing, you know, uh, in my inner man. Okay, I agree. No, I'm not at a state of 100% faith, uh, but I, I grow every day, and every Christian has that uh, ability to grow in God likeness and Christ likeness, um, you know, by continuously beholding uh, the glory of Jesus, right? That part is, but I am a son of God. I am 100% forgiven. I am righteous. I'm not being made righteous. I am righteous. God paid the price for this to be so. I am right. He accepts me now. Now, do I always believe it? Do I always have no? I that's the the human struggle and the the you know, grow. We we grow in those areas, right? The sin nature. I have a new nature, right? But there's a vestige of my old nature, an echo that's still within me. And as I grow in Christ likeness, the Holy Spirit is minimizing that. So I like how Joseph Prince says it. Uh, God sees no sin on me. There's sin in me, but there's no sin on me. And the Holy Spirit is working out that sin that's in me as I focus on the bread of life, which is Christ. All right? So, yes, the Jews, they got it. Maybe modern day uh, debaters want to say, well, he didn't say direct. Trust me, they understood what he was saying because they understood the, the, they had a great understanding, perhaps, of exactly what God is. And if you say you're the son of God, that means you are also God, right? The son of a lion is a lion. The son of a dog is a dog, right? The son of a human being is a human being. The son of God is God. Colossians 1.15, referring to Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. 
For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that all things he may have the preeminence. So God, this complete family, whole, complete, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit were in existence, right? And the image of that invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, right? All He created all things. He created all things. And for by him, excuse me, he created all things. So the part of God, the part of God that made all things, created all things, is Jesus, okay, but still God. So it's almost like God created all of this. He created all things, right, almost like a gift to and for Christ. Right? He created all things. Um, and that includes the invisible realm and the visible realm. So think about that. Everything, the principalities, the, the dominions, seen and unseen, were all created by Jesus. Think about that. We're all created by Jesus. And he is before everything. Right, so we're the church. The church is all is the body that consists of all Christians everywhere. We're the body of Christ, like Jews, like we're a family of people, like Jews are a family of people. A Jew is everyone that is a direct descendant uh, of Abraham through his grandson Israel. Right. Because Abraham had other sons and he had other grandchildren, but the promise was only uh, travel through the line of Abraham, then to his son Isaac, so not Ishmael and not the other son. And then Isaac had Esau and Jacob, but it went through Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. And then he had 12 sons. And I think a more direct one, it's actually also referring to the descendants of the kingdom of Judah because the other kingdoms were carried away. Um, the, they call them the lost tribes of Israel, right? And I believe that's where the direct, the Jew comes from the uh, term Judah. But like their family people, Christians are a family people, right? And the head of that family is Christ. He is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. What is the firstborn from the dead? Jesus Christ was the only being, person, to die, right, and be resurrected and never die again. So there were other people that were resurrected, right, like the, um, uh, like Lazarus, for example, or, or the man that they threw into the pit and he fell on, I believe, it was Elijah's bones, or it was Elijah or Elisha, I can't remember which one, he can't. But they all eventually died again, right? Jesus Christ was the first to be resurrected from death, never to die again. Okay. And what do we, what, how should we see Christ that in all things he may have the preeminence? God the Father, the whole God, the Holy Spirit wants Jesus to be primary in all of our lives. He wants everything to revolve around his son, Jesus. He wants him to have the preeminence. Okay? 
that's the mode of the Christian, right? I've said this before. To be a Christian really is to be Christ-minded, Christ-centered, Christ-obsessed. Christ involved. Christ. It's all about Christ. Right? Christ is the, the, the great container that you put your entire life in. He's your all in all and everything. And he is the only way to the Father. So you see, you don't get access to the Father unless you go through Christ. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. So, yes, the Bible... Is very clear in my opinion. It Jesus Christ is God. He is God. Fine. Those who want to argue say, well, he never said it. He never said. And that's what they're arguing. He never said it like this. I am God. Okay. Well, because what Jesus was doing is he was holding fast to the idea that if you testify of yourself, your testimony is not true. So Jesus was just being himself, which is God, and allowing you to behold that and make an assessment. Okay? Doesn't change what he is, right? He allows you to choose. He's showing you who he is. Now it's up to you to acknowledge that and see the truth of that. And if you choose not to, fine. God will not force you. Now, at a particular time in the future, you will be contained in a place. Initially, hell, and then hell and everyone in it will be tossed into the lake of fire. I've heard people say, how, how could a loving God? Well, not just that I fully get it, but I do get it somewhat, all right? You cannot allow these raving, roaming um, lawless spirits to just roam the universe and creating havoc and contaminating everything they touch. You can't have that, right? Hell and the lake of fire was originally created for the devil and his angels. You can choose not to be a part of that. And, and think about that. Just think about that for a minute. How grand that is. God is putting the choice in your hands. That's, that's actually pretty grand. You choose. It's also, in my opinion, very noble. God said, you choose. I'm not going to beat it into you. I'm not going to force you. I'm just going to show you the truth. Here's the truth. I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to reveal yourself, reveal myself to you, and now you decide. You don't have to be condemned, and you don't have to be and separated from God forever. And here's the, the amazing thing. And he paid the cost of whatever it takes for you to be restored to him. Think about that. The cost has been paid. God has, as we say, he has taken care of everything. He did everything that needed to be done. All he's telling you and everyone is just make a decision. God is infinitely just. He's infinitely honorable, which is why he won't force your free will. As much as God wants every single human being to be saved, he will not force them because to force them would not be just. It would it would be wrong to do that. He shows you the truth, and now he says, now you decide. It's your choice. I've paid the price for you. I've made it possible for us to be restored together as a family. Same way Adam was before the fall. And it was a huge price. It cost God a lot. Consider that. Think about it. God paid a huge price. A huge price. God paid a huge price. Think about that. But it was worth it to him. So now all you have to do 
And all humans have to is just make a choice. I believe that God is and always is speaking to every heart everywhere. The Bible tells us even nature itself testifies to man that there's a God. Nature by itself, if you just look at nature, it is telling you that God exists. Now, if you fold your hands and say, well, I, hey, I don't care about that. I'm no, I, all right, that's your choice. But don't blame God. All right? You choose. You can choose to be in a relationship with the infinite, all loving, the infinitely wonderful God for all eternity, or you can choose to be separated from him. That is your choice. So make the right choice. So once again, I believe clearly the Old and the New Testament, the Old Testament was pointing to it, telling us it was coming, and the New Testament then clearly states it. All right? Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, is God. All right, let's summarize. One, the Trinity is evident in both the Old and New Testament, as I showed previously. Uh, once again, people say, oh, Trinity is not in the Bible. Well, I mean, automobile is not, the word automobile is not in the Bible either. doesn't mean that automobiles don't exist. You know, there are a lot of words per se that are not in the Bible, right? Or uh, like the word rapture. But the concept and the idea is in the Bible. And as we saw from those, and those are just a few. I mean, obviously, this is, you know, a short Bible study, but those are just a few. Uh, I believe the evidence of the Trinity is all through the Old Testament. Directly stated in the New Testament, it's all through the Old Testament, right? If you, if you want to see it. The Jews clearly understood that Jesus claimed to be God, and we saw that. Or they would not have stoned him. They would have just ignored him. Oh, you're the son of God. Oh, okay, well, all right, well, good for you. You know, have a good day, you know. But they took what he was saying very seriously. They took it to the point where they were willing to stone him to death more than once. So the, they understood Jesus was saying that he was God. He was saying it using a different set of words, but he was saying it, that he is God. And three, Jesus Christ is the only God anyone will see. I once got to, I believe it's from, from God a long time ago. Um, if God were ever to show you his ID on the picture, uh, the picture on his ID would be a picture of Jesus. Jesus is the image of the only, the God, the only, the infinite God. He is the way that should, no one comes to the Father but through Jesus. Right? There's no other way to him. Right? There are people who have tried to go around him, and, 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 and in, in many cases, it was nothing. And then in some cases, they were worshiping demons and devils. They made little statues, or they, they were worshiping you know, other gods. And the Bible clearly tells us that some of those gods they were worshiping, they were just worshiping devils. Yeah. A lot of them were worshiping nothing. They had this little statue, this piece of wood, they would bow to it, and it, it never did anything. It was just there. It was all in their minds, you know? Now, for those who would worship these statues and these, and it, you know, and these images, and, you know, it would turn or move or speak or start bleeding or crying, so that's a devil. So that was a devil, okay? So when you try, there's only one way to God. Jesus Christ. You could try to go around him and create another God, and typically all you're doing is wasting your time, or you're in you're uh, associating with devils and demons, which will be detrimental to you, which hurts you. Awesome. Once again, this has been the Rising Christian Bible Study. Thank you for attending. Have a wonderful week, a wonderful day. Keep your eyes on Christ. Keep looking to Jesus. Pray daily. Ask, pray to Christ. Ask him, Lord, show me your glory. Reveal yourself to me. Show me who you are, God. Help me to know you. Pray daily. Give me more wisdom and knowledge of the truth. 
The Holy Spirit was sent to, send, uh, to lead us into all truth. Pray, ask the Holy Spirit. Show me the... And for those who are uncertain, why don't you just ask God? Trust me, if you're sincere, he will answer. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to me. Show me more of his glory. Help me to get it. Help me to understand, Holy Spirit. Seek God. If you diligently seek God, he will reward you. Amen. Awesome. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening, a wonderful week, a wonderful month, and a wonderful year. And we will see you the next time.